What's worse than overpaying for terrible internet service? Overpaying for two terrible internet services. And that's the situation that I find myself in. This video is going to be about my attempt to salvage both of those terrible internet services and try to combine them into one decent one. So if that's something that interests you, stick around and see how I do it. And if it doesn't interest you, watch the video anyway, because I need views and at the very least, you can just be entertained by my misfortune. So let's check it out. All right, so a little bit about my situation. Like every other person in the world, um, where I live dictates what internet service providers I can get. And where I live now, I have the choice between two. Charter Spectrum, which provides speeds of 1000 megabits down and 30 megabits up, which is awesome, right? Well, yeah, I thought so, and that's what I went with, but their connection drops out multiple times a day, sometimes for only five seconds, sometimes for 30, sometimes for a couple of minutes. And trust me, I've had at least a dozen texts come out here. I've even gotten their supervisor involved and he straight up just told me, yeah, there's something wrong with the main line and it would be almost impossible for us to find. So yeah, the speeds are good and perfectly fine, but dropping connections, especially when I work from home or when I'm gaming is a nightmare. On the other side, we have AT&T DSL, which is reliable, but their speeds are only 30 megabits down and five up, which is usable, but the uploads, especially when I'm running a cloud server with services like Nextcloud and some cloud gaming setups, five megabits upload is, is not good. So now I have both and I'm trying to leverage the speed of Spectrum and the reliability of AT&T to see if I can get some combination that works. And I think I've found a decent solution. So let's jump into it. So to do this, I'm using PFSense and I'm using the uh, NetGate SG1100. Uh, you don't have to use that as long as you have some type of box running PFSense with three dedicated network ports, then you should be good here. But let's jump into it. Right off the bat, you can see my dashboard. And over here, you'll notice that I have a single WAN, a LAN, and then a WAN 2. And then this guest and virtual are some other VLANs. I won't cover that in this video. But here's the important part. Two WANs, both with static IP addresses. Now, obviously, there's a blurred out because I don't want you perverts trying to freaking hack into my network. So the first WAN is Spectrum. So anytime you see WAN, uh, that is my Spectrum connection. And WAN 2 is the AT&T connection. So that is being brought in by the opt port on the SG-1100. So if you have an SG-1100, you know the opt port can be used for whatever. If you want to bring in a WAN, you can do that. If you want to use it as another LAN, you can do that. So step one, you are going to want to go to interfaces and go to switches and ports. And the first thing you'll notice is that here are all the ports on my SG-1100. I have three. I have the opt, the LAN, and the WAN. You'll see that opt is port one on VID 4092. Note the port that you're adding for your secondary LAN or secondary WAN, uh, I have port one. So now that that is noted, we can set them up. But if those aren't there and they're not available, you may have to go to interfaces and go to assignments and add it here. And with the SG-1100, it's added by default. And you'll notice this says WAN2 instead of opt. I changed that name already, but you can see here is 4092 on the opt switch, and it is dedicated to WAN2. So to set it up, you can either go to interfaces and click directly on your opt or WAN or, or whatever it's named for your secondary WAN connection, and click on that, and it'll bring you to the interface. Make sure that is enabled. Description, you can change it to whatever. Mine is now changed to WAN2. Makes it easier to understand which is my first WAN and which is my second. You can also name them based on your ISP. 99% of the time, you're going to set this to DHCP. That means that your ISP is providing you an IP address. And unless you are paying for a static IP address from your ISP, you're going to leave this to DHCP. 
For switch port, make sure that it is the port that we looked at before. Remember I said that the opt port was port one, so that is selected. And that is essentially everything you have to do here. If this is a WAN connection, um, it's best practice to check both of these boxes at the bottom for block private networks and black, black, and block bag on networks. So you can read more about these if you want to, but for most people, leave both of these checked and click save. After you do this, you essentially have a secondary WAN set up. And if you go to your dashboard, you should notice that it looks similar to mine in that you are getting an IP address from your ISP for your secondary WAN. That's it, right? You're good to go? No, not yet. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is determine how you want these dual WANs to essentially act. Do you want them to act as equals in that anything that comes in can use either of those connections or do you wanna prioritize one over the other? So if you have two really good ISPs and you're bringing both of them in, maybe you just want both of them to essentially aggregate and act as a load balancer. But in my case, one is more stable and that being at and I want that to act as my primary WAN while I want Spectrum to act as my secondary and only kick in if at and goes down. So the way to do that is you go to system and routing. And when you go to routing, you should see your gateways in here. By default, you're assigned two for each interface. So you can see for WAN, we have a WAN DHCP, WAN DHCP6, and then similarly for uh, WAN2, we have the same thing. Now you don't really have to do anything here yet. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to gateway groups and you shouldn't see anything here unless you have other ones set up, but for dual WANs, you're gonna wanna go to add and create one. And when you do that, uh, give it a group name. So if you want this to be more of a load balancer, call it WAN load balancer. If you want this to be a failover like I have it, call it failover, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! What matters is that you have these set up with the correct tiered allocation. And you can see here's WAN, here's WAN2. WAN being Spectrum and WAN2 being at and And you can see that I've assigned the at and one to tier one while Spectrum is set to tier two. This essentially means that a tier one WAN is going to be used as priority number one, while anything lower will kind of go down in that order. So if you have five WANs, you can have a five tiered WAN failover network. Um, but in most cases, not even in most cases, in my case, I just have two. So if you want to do load balance, all you would do is set this both to tier one, and that means that both of them would be used equally in kind of a round robin scenario. So set it up similar to this, and in trigger level, uh, this is what determines when to take a gateway offline. Um, you can set it between four different priorities or scenarios, but I just have it set to member down. at and is pretty reliable. So when you have that set up, click save. Once you have that saved, go back to gateways. This is an important step. And make sure your default gateway for IPv4 is set to that gateway group that you just created. So when you do that, you should see a setup very similar to what I have. Um, another step you don't wanna skip is go into each of your WAN gateways and make sure that neither of these boxes are checked. So disable gateway monitoring and disable gateway monitoring action. So if any of these are checked, there's gonna be an issue with failing over and going to a new WAN in the event of an issue. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into your firewall rules, go to LAN and make sure that you are passing through all traffic to your specific gateway group. So you can see I've created that rule here and you will do something very similar to this where by default LAN, you can pass through everything, all traffic. Um, a lot of people have that set up, but you're gonna essentially copy that rule where you're passing through from LAN using IPv4, protocol any, um, your source is your LAN net, your destination is any, but the one step you need is you're gonna have to go into show advanced options and then scroll down to where you see gateway and select your gateway group that you created earlier. What this is gonna do is say traffic coming through on the LAN going outward, 
uh, make sure that we are using that gateway and allowing all traffic through that gateway. So do that, click save. Once you do that, you'll see your new rule set up and should be allowing traffic through that gateway. So you're probably thinking, okay, based on what you've said, you're essentially only using your AT&T network and you said it's reliable. So you're basically paying extra for the spectrum internet and you're not even really using it. So here's where the kind of magic comes in, where I said I'm trying to combine both of them. What I'm doing here and what you probably noticed on this land screen is I have a specific rule set up. What I'm doing here is assigning specific machines on my network to use the spectrum internet, even if AT&T is up. So the reason I want this is because I run two things that specifically need that extra bandwidth, Plex and Nextcloud. So it makes sense to use more speed with a little bit less reliability, whereas the rest of my home network, where I'm either gaming or remoted in to work, that needs a steady connection and doesn't necessarily need that huge download and upload bandwidth. So it's pretty easy to set this up. Um, the way I've done it is set up an alias for all my spectrum things. So here you can see there's only two and the way to set up an alias is really easy. Go to firewall, aliases, and then you can create one. Um, for example, this one, it's straightforward. Give it a name, I call it spectrum stuff. Down here, you can add as many hosts as you want. Um, if you have 10 different machines with static IPs that you want routed through a specific WAN, name them here. I only have two. Now that we have an alias, what you need to do to actually get it to route through that specific WAN is go back into rules, go to LAN, and you can see here, this is the rule that I have set up. So if we go in and it's very similar to the one we had before, pass through, LAN, IPv4, any. And the difference is that for source, you are gonna want it to set it to a single host or alias. And this is why we made an alias, because if we didn't, we'd have to have a rule for every single device we want to allocate to a WAN. In this case, we just create an alias give a bunch of devices to that alias and we only have to make the rule once. So that is gonna be your source and your destination is gonna be any. And then scroll down in the same way we did before, show advanced and select which WAN you want it to go through. So gateway, you can see it is directly assigned to my WAN, not WAN2, not my failover WAN, but my initial WAN that is tied to Spectrum. And it's that easy. My network setup now isn't as terrible as it was before. Before I had pretty decent speeds, but I would get kicked off of my internet while working multiple times a day. If I was playing a video game, I would lag out multiple times a day. So overall, I'm not happy with having to pay for two ISPs and go through all this complication just to get a decent overall internet experience. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative or entertaining or a little bit of both. Um, but if you have any questions, be sure to drop them down in the comments below. If you wanna share your setups or some information about your setup, I'd love to hear about it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.